Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, it's going to be the main event of Titan FC 39. Coming up on June the 10th, he's going to be fighting Jay-Z Cavalcante for the vacant Titan FC lightweight title. It is Pat Healy, who is 33-21, and 21th, one no contest in his career. Pat, as always, appreciate time. I had a chance to uh, catch up with Jay-Z recently, and Jay-Z had talked about the fact of the two of you have fought in, in a previous promotion at the same time as well. It kind of like he always kind of felt that some point down the line that the two of you would, would end up getting in the cage together. Did you always kind of have that feeling about Jay-Z that, you know what, that's probably a guy at some point I'm going to step into the cage with? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like we were in strike force together, uh, you know, and that's really thought where I thought we'd meet, you know, uh, uh we were kind of two, two more of the top athletes, uh, in strike force and, uh, for whatever reason and it never lined up that way and uh you know um it's an exciting fight for me i think uh fighting another veteran like he is and uh is a big deal and you know i think it'll be a great fight for the fans it, 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 first off why do you think it's a great fight for the fans uh, i think just our styles are going to match up well for an exciting fight i mean he's uh we have similar styles, I would say. We both kind of like top control. Uh, I think we're both like to mix it up in the grappling. Uh, you know, he likes to stand and bang too. Uh, so I think we'll, you'll see some of that too. So I think it'll be just a great MMA fight, you know, where you'll see all aspects of, of the game. Would you rather be facing a veteran or that young guy who who is looking at you as like, hey, I'm going to make a name off Pat Healy? Uh, I, I'm not. It's a tough one because uh, I've definitely faced both in my career. Um, I've definitely faced a lot of young guys who, you know, were hoping to make a name off me. Um, but you know, I don't know. Fighting a veteran like him is just there's already like a mutual respect. Like I, I know he's going to come in ready. I know like his T's will be crossed. His eyes will be dotted. Like I know he'll have a good game plan for this fight. I mean, I think uh, a lot of younger fighters lose it in their game plan. They don't have a game plan or they have a loose game plan. They're like, Hey, I'm going to keep the fight standing. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. And, uh, you know, I think the older you get, the more experience you have, you realize that, man, like, at least for me and my style, like, lining up a, a proper game plan is a key piece of it, and sticking to that game plan is, is also a part of it. When you go into a fight, generally, not not necessarily speaking this fight, but generally, do you do you almost have like a couple of different game plans? Because ultimately, you may have one game plan, then all of a sudden, twenty seconds into the fight, that game plan's out the window. Uh, not really, because I mean, you're always you always got to make adjustments. Like nothing ever goes in as planned in MMA. I mean, uh, it's just not the way the sport is nothing ever goes the way you draw it up uh but you know what i i think where you can get into trouble is trying to change your game plan completely in a fight uh you know maybe if you notice an area where your opponent's completely lacking in that you can take an advantage of that's a you know a, a different kind of shift but you know i think sticking to a solid game plan and having keys, you know, that you feel you need to execute to win is, is very important. In terms of, of this fight, you're going across the country to Florida and basically his backyard where that's where he's trained as it. Is that one of the Do you kind of prefer that kind of fight where, you know what? It's like, look, all I got to do is show up in the city. I don't got to worry about anything else. And you kind of revel in the fact of you're going into your opponent's backyard. Yeah, I want it one way or the other, either my backyard or his backyard. I want, uh, I like, like both dynamics because of, you know, I want people to be excited about the fight. I want the crowd to be excited. I want there to be a lot of hype. I, I like the energy. I don't care if they're booing and yelling at you. 
or cheering and, and rooting you on, like, it's all energy, you know, it, it all makes the fight funner. And, of course, it's going to be for the Titan FC lightweight title. You had won that title and then lost it against Rick Hahn, split decision. And of course, you're coming off uh, the, the victory there at Titan FC 37. Uh, you know, obviously, you've won, you know, four of your last five uh, since exiting the UFC. I mean, first off, I mean, is ultimately getting back to the UFC what your primary goal is? Or right now, you're at the point of, I'm just taking it one fight at a time, and, and we'll see what happens after this fight's over. Uh. A little of both. I mean, I, I mean that is my eventual goal is to get back to the UFC, but I'm not. Uh, I, I don't. I focus on that when I don't have a fight motivation, but when I do, I just focus on that fight. I don't want anything to distract me. As far as as I'm concerned, the UFC is not a concern right now. It's just all about uh, my opponent and finishing him in, in dramatic fashion and. If I can do that, I think everything else will take care of itself. What do you think you have to do in this fight to get that dramatic finish? Is it just simply go out there and do what you've been planning for the past couple of weeks? Is it as simple as that? Yeah, I think sticking to the game plan, uh, maintaining top control is going to be key. I think we'll both be looking uh, for takedowns in this fight. Uh, I think or if if he if he's not, then I think he'll try to keep it standing. But I think it's important for me to get takedowns in this fight. It's one thing I've really been focusing on. Same with my last fight before this was getting back to my wrestling. And it's something I was able to do in my last fight successfully. So, um, I think just, you know, sticking to my game plan and, and, uh, you know, really pushing the pace. I think I can, I can finish him later in the rounds. I'm pretty used to five rounds at this point. Fought it, I think, five times in my career now. Um, uh, I think really my only loss in a five-round fight was at 170. Uh, I don't, I don't think I lost that fight to Rick Hahn. I don't. I've watched it ten times. I don't see how I lost that fight. Uh, but you know, I five rounds works into my game. I mean that's what I do is push the pace and, and pushing it for five rounds is something I can definitely do. Going back to something you said there, did you, did you ever feel like you had, I don't know if the, the word is forgot your wrestling, but did you feel like maybe you weren't implementing it enough in your fights? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I was, I kind of got away from it in my training. Like I got so caught up and focused on, on everything else that I was going to do. And I I need to work on my weaknesses. And, uh, you know, when I went through a rough patch of losses, it's because I wasn't wrestling well. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of pieces to, you know, MMA wrestling. It's not, to me, it's not just shooting a double leg and getting a takedown. It's, it's all the clinch stuff. It's moving a guy in the clinch. It's hitting in the clinch. It's setting it up in a MMA fashion. This isn't, you know, wrestling where we just clinch up and you hit a duck under or something. This is a fight. So, you know, striking can be a part of your wrestling. And, you know, I think for me, when I fight my worst is when I separate the two, like, okay, now I'm striking. Okay. Now I'm wrestling. When, when I fight well is when I do it all together. Like, my wrestling is a blur with the the striking. They're all blended together, and because that's the way it should be, it's all it all works together. I know you, you've done some training out there in Portland. I don't know if you're still out there. I mean, I know there's been some some changes over the past couple of months there with with a, a gym closing. Where are you uh, training at these days? Uh, I am in Portland still. Um, you know, I was caught up in in that whole when Rose City closed, uh, I'm now at Gracie Barra, um, which Fabiano Scherner, who, who runs it, uh, has been a long time coach of mine. He was back at team quest, uh, when I was there, he was, he's belted me, uh, in jujitsu, every belt I've got. So, um, uh, you know, he's a long time coach, so that's good to get back to, to, to training with him but really i just lay my base out here and then now like tomorrow i go to uh new mexico and 
and I'm going to be at the BMF ranch with Cowboy and uh, I stay at his house and and we train hard together and uh, and also down at Jackson's obviously uh, you get the uh, uh, extreme knowledge of Greg Jackson. You, I mean, you can't, you got to take advantage of that. What is one thing about Greg that has really stuck with you and that maybe a lot of fans may not know about Greg? Uh, man, you know, for the longest time, I couldn't understand it. I would always, you know, all these good guys went down to Jackson's. I used to think, man, like, why are they leaving where they train at to go train somewhere else? But Greg has this way, man, that, uh, just where you want to earn his respect. I don't know what it is about him. Uh, but you know, when he walks by and says something nice, you know, about what you've been doing it, you know, there couldn't be a better feeling. There's just something of, he just has this like aura about him and, you know, the way he, uh, can break things down to you and, uh, you know, his complete knowledge of the game and, you know, his spirit, the way he's got this calming, like soothing spirit, I think. You know, most people have seen him in the corner of, you know, a bunch of different guys and, and how he is, uh, it's not, it's nothing fake. It's nothing that he's trying to do. He just has this way about him, you know, that not only makes you respect him, but kind of puts you at ease and, and, you know, you feel like you're in good hands and, you know, you can have complete trust in that. Who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, I'll have, I'm not a hundred percent sure who everybody will be, but I bring one of my main training partners from Portland, Josh Botkins, uh, is my jujitsu coach. So I know he'll be there and probably one or two of the BMF guy coaches, uh, probably Javari, Jafari Varner is kind of my main wrestling coach. And, of course, this is going to be the main event of Titan FC 39 coming off June 10th. UFC Fight Pass, vacant lightweight title. Pat will be taking on Jay-Z Cavacante. Pat, as always, appreciate the time, man, and uh, look forward to seeing your fight, man. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me on, and it's always a pleasure.